Shalom, beloved, a word. You know, right now, we're in the midst of a propaganda blitz. Propaganda, information especially of a bias or misleading nature used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. We are in the midst of a propaganda blitz. As I speak on this, when I got up this morning, the spirit kept bringing the eagle, the eagle to me. I turned on the television and two different people were talking about the eagle. And the first thing that came to mind was the eagle in the book of Revelations, beloved. Revelations, yes, yes, yes. Chapter four, verse seven. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf and the third beast had a face as a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, an eagle beloved. You see here in the West, we live in a land that calls itself, it's, its emblem is the eagle, but the true eagle that we're speaking of is in scripture. You see that eagle, can see far off into the distance. It can fly over 10,000 miles high, above storm, 10,000 feet, I'm sorry, high, above storms. It uses the storm clouds to help it see, and it gains its strength and its ability to move where other birds won't fly, and it grows stronger and more accurate. It can see two miles in front of it to the point that when it dives for its prey, it can move at speeds up to and or exceeding 100 miles an hour and run into that prey with pinpoint accuracy. Yes, beloved. That eagle. We're talking about an eagle, the eagles that won't eat dead things. They won't eat dead things. They catch live prey and consume them. Where other animals are scavengers, the eagle will only eat live prey, meaning it will catch its kill live. It will kill it, but it is live, just like we live by the living word of Yah. We don't consume dead things. We don't consume propaganda, which is dead things. We go for the living thing. Most eagles have their nest on high. We're closer to our creator. They also have their nest by rivers and bodies of water. Like we are by the rivers of living water that cleanses us, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking about the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. 10,000 feet above the storms where other birds will sit it out. The storms of this life make us stronger, teach us how to maneuver and how to see clearly. Our accuracy is so spot on through that spirit of knowledge that Ruach Da'af, through that Ruach Etzer, the spirit of counsel, through that Ruach Chakma, the spirit of wisdom, through the Ruach Benya, the spirit of understanding, we get pinpoint accuracy on our vision. I'm not talking about the false eagle. The false eagle, no, 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 that the so-called freedom eagle that never existed. No, I'm talking about the one, that fourth beast that was like a flying eagle. I'm talking about the same way Jonathan and Saul were considered like a lion and like an eagle. Okay, that spirit. That spirit, beloved. You see, when I go back and I talk about propaganda, when you've got the eye of an eagle, not just the eye in your physical eyes, your mental eyes see it, your spiritual eye sees it and discerns accurately from a long way off. You can see where that enemy is going to be, where he's going to land at from a high distance. And when you die, 
the speed, you can go up to 100 to 150 miles in an eagle's dive with pinpoint accuracy when your talons catch the prey. Yes, beloved, at this point, the eyes of the eagles are upon the chosen one. We see it, we hear it, we recognize it. Information is propaganda, especially of a bias or misleading nature used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. We have so-called news system that they are more of a propaganda machine than a true news reporting machine. And even this, when I thought of it, Yah was giving me images and videos that every time I thought something, the video would come on and back it up. I want to play that video for you, beloved, of, of a woman who is saying just that. It's a short, we're not going to look at all of it, but I want you to see it. There's an old saying in journalism. If one person tells you it's raining and another tells you it's not, you're not supposed to report both sides. You're supposed to look outside and see for yourself. I'm afraid times have changed. Nowadays, journalists see what they want to see. Just look at the recent riots in France. We showed you the pictures on Monday. There were vehicles burning on the streets, police officers chasing and arresting protesters. It was clearly evidence of long running problems in France, like racism or the backlash against immigration. But Western media did not see it that way. Look at this article in Politico. It's called The Politics of the French Riots. In fact, let me read out what it says. This is largely an insurrection without aims. The riots are, in a sense, anti-France. Thank God it wasn't in India or Bangladesh or South Africa, because then the riots would have been pro-democracy. Next, we have the Washington Post. They say the protests will create an opening for the far right. How about that? These people were outraged by systemic racism. They were fed up of being treated as second-class citizens, but when they protest, they're accused of helping the far right. Classy from the folks at Washington Post. Guardian also had a problematic tape. Look at their headline. A grim tale of the growing gulf between haves and have-nots. They're calling it a class war. Maybe there is a class element to it. But shooting a 17-year-old at point blank is not just a class problem. It's a race problem. This was targeted racism. Guardian had no problem using such language about India. Look at their report on the Delhi riots. And let me quote that for you. The violence in Delhi is not a riot. It's, it's targeted anti-Muslim brutality. I have more examples for you. The New York Times is calling this a new challenge for Macron. They're not blaming his policies for it. They're simply calling it a challenge. Wall Street Journal is not even concerned about the protests. They're worried about the French cops. Look at two of their reports. French riots test Macron's loyalty to police, as if that's the bigger issue here. Another headline says, behind the riots lie years of anger over police conduct. So it's not systemic racism. It's not anti-immigration sentiments either. It's all about police conduct. The New York Times has said the same thing. French police won authority to shoot at drivers, but got no training whatsoever. Do you really need training for that? Not shooting 17-year-olds comes naturally to most people. I guess in France, you have to be taught. Now compare this to how they cover Indian police. Look at the same New York Times during the day. I wanted to show you, beloved, the propaganda machine, the propaganda machine at work, who changed the truth of Yah into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever and ever. You know, one of the things that Yahuwah hates is the shedding of innocent blood. Whether it's in France, whether it's here in America, wherever innocent blood is shed. And yet that propaganda machine goes into effect, beloved. But you see, the eagle eye is upon his chosen so that our ears have the discernment to hear and our eyes can see the truth and the manipulation. Yes, one of the other things, okay, that I wanted to share, forgive me as I move around. Yes, this is one of the ones I spoke about. Hands that shed innocent blood. Right now, what they don't want to look at 
and it's going on and you are seeing it, beloved. Yah has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And he's chosen the weak things of the world to confound those things which are mighty. He has chosen those who they consider weak, poor people, people who they don't consider as good as them, people who they don't consider as educated as them, the base things of the world and things which are despised has Yah chosen and yea, things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Yes, beloved, we are watching the eagle's eye. And we are not the only ones that see it. There are others who are reporting it. And they're trying to rewrite the story. They're trying to retell it in a way that serves their purpose. But it's not going to serve their purpose. I just wanted to share this with you, beloved. Because the eye of the eagle is open and with pinpoint accuracy, feeding on living things, his word, the truth. There are those, when we look at two kings in the Bible, we look at King Saul and we look at King David. Saul chose to worship the creature more than the creator when he was supposed to wait for Samuel before he made an offering to know whether or not he should do something. But the people started leaving him. He started worrying about what the people were going to say. He got frightened by the people. And so he made a foolish move. And Samuel told him, had you not done that, had you not broken the covenant, the covenant with Yah is what he tells us to do. He said, your kingdom would have been established forever. But now Yah is going to give it to a better man, a man after his own heart. When David came along and he was a young boy, he heard Goliath threatening the army of Yahuwah. All these grown men, including three of his elder brothers, were in that army. King Saul was head of Yashorel. None of them would step up to Goliath because they were more regarding of the creature than they were the creator that they served. They had more regard for the creature than the creator. But King David, beloved, he knew to whom he belonged and whom he served. He knew the power of Yahweh. Yes, he did. He had that. Ego lie. You may come at me with swords and stave, but I come at you in the name of most high. And he blew his mind. You see, beloved, we are at that point where that ego eye is opening in these times. We do not have to follow what people say. We saw above the storm and let the storm build us up and let us soar so that we can get that long vision. We know what this situation is going to end up being. We know because Yahweh told us. He told us. We're going to go from victory to victory and glory to glory. And we're not using it, measuring it on a worldly yardstick. We're measuring it on the truth and power and glory of who our creator is. So it doesn't matter whether you're that poverty-stricken little shepherd boy versus a king because you see even though David had been anointed before he was anointed he'd already took down a lion and a bear because he knew to whom he belonged and he worshiped the creator more than himself he knew what he was capable of doing above and beyond Saul given all that he had let those people convince him to do something he should not have done. Even to the point that when he was told to go in and slay a whole nation, he took the king, he brought back some of the best sheep and some of the best livestock saying, you know, well, we'll make sacrifice with him. Y'all never told you to do that. It was at that time that Samuel said, Yah 
requires obedience above sacrifice. Some of us have been lied to if you sacrifice, even though you're not obeying that which Yah told you, it'll be all right. No. Mm -mm. Stubbornness is like witchcraft, beloved, but we already know that. And we've got that ego eye. We're soaring above it and we do not eat dead things. We do not eat dead things. It is his living word that we eat. And yes, just like the eagle stays by a body of water, we stay by the living water, letting it cleanse us, letting it refresh us, letting it renew our minds so that we can mount up with wings like an eagle below. So you see, even if the situation looks like something that you can't handle, all you have to do is remember to worship the creator and don't worry about what the creature says as long as you know to whom you belong. Just like that eagle flying around the throne of Yahoo, the one who says, holy, 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 he knows who he serves. He knows what he can do. And no false image, no false word, no dead thing will ever come into him. We around people who are the walking dead. We see these shows and we think, oh, that's just a funny turn. No, they are. There are people, if you do not have the life of the most high and his living word in you, then they are the walking dead. And once they go through judgment, they will be twice dead. Yes, beloved, but we don't consume dead things. So when we hear the propaganda being spewed at us by these so-called worldly narrators, we use our ego vision. We use the vision to see far off because we already know what the end of the matter is. When we ingest things to keep us strong, we eat living food, just like that eagle. Just like that eagle. And we go above the storm clouds. You see, the other birds, they won't fly into the storm. The eagle will fly in it and above it. And let those winds of those same storms build him up to take him where he needs to go. We are in a battle. He dressed us up. We put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. He put us in a position. We are in a storm, but we already have won through Yeshua HaMashiach. And the food we eat is the living word. He told us, this is my body. Eat of it. This is my blood. Drink of it. We are ingesting living things. We do not eat dead things. And we are flying around the throne of our creator, glorifying, honoring him as we watch this thing play out. And nothing that speaks dead words, nothing that reports propaganda and lie that honors the creature more than the creator who is given over to a delusion will ever ensnare the chosen one. Beloved, it is a word. Shalom.